Hey Hickok45, look what I've got. Is that a beauty or what? You guessed it, FAL, the Israeli version. Yes, during the Cold War, this was the right arm of the free world. And we're going to put it through its paces, try it out. 308, 762 by 51 NATO. Let's take a few shots with it. What a gorgeous rifle. <laughs> Oh, what should we shoot? How about a two liter? Hey, it works. Let's try a tank. <laughs> ah, another two liter. Cool. You know, I think a 308 will penetrate a two liter. I think it'll even, uh, pen well, it won't penetrate that hard plate over there, but it might hit it. If I do my part, Sure will. Oh, a flower pot. Flower pots were just made to be shot with Israeli FALs. Don't you think? <laughs> and so were cans of paint. Whoa! <laughs> Did I get that gallon jug over there? Okay. <laughs> cool, cool. I see a cinder block over there. Ah, uh, you think you're down. <laughs> nice. Ooh, she's pretty fast. <laughs> 308 is difficult to, to handle full auto, right? So, yes, we have a, uh, an Israeli uh, FAL here. And they're very distinctive looking, as you can tell, if you were not familiar with them. And you know the FAL, at least by sight. Uh, you've got your wooden uh, forearm and everything, and they're just a, a different look. They're really good-looking guns. Uh, to me, they are the, I don't know, maybe the best-looking FAL. I don't know. FALs are FALs, but let's put it down over here and uh, let you take a look at it. And, uh, and well, if you're not familiar with the FAL, we'll kind of introduce you to it, I guess. It, uh, I'm not an expert in them. I owned one, actually, back about, uh, when was it, 15 years ago? Didn't have it a long time, but uh, it was a big, heavy rifle, and I fell in love with the M1A, and then I traded the FAL for something. And uh, that's part of the reason that uh, a lot of countries got away from the FAL. It is a very large rifle. It's very long, heavy, and uh, I believe the Israelis discovered during the war of, uh, about 73, the Yom Kippur War, that uh, you know, it, it was a little bit sensitive to sand, too, and they uh, they moved to the Galil, the M16, and uh, you know made a made a transition during the, during that period. But anyway, these are great old rifles, and there are so many of you probably a lot of people collect these and shoot them. They uh, you know they came around in the uh, early 50s, 1950s, you know, post World War II. This is the battle rifle. You know over over 90 countries actually use this thing. A couple of million of them uh, developed uh, since 1954, and uh, so they're, they're just extremely popular. The FAL, in English that stands for Light Automatic Rifle. It, uh, now all of them were not uh, select fire, most of them were I think, but a lot of countries decided and, and determined that they were, they were difficult to control, just like the M14 in full auto fire. And so most of the, the value in it is in semi-automatic fire. In fact, I think some, I read some countries actually uh, suspended training uh, with these rifles in full auto mode. And uh, because, I mean, it, it's a 308. That is a powerful round. You, you start touching those things off uh, 15 or 20 in a second. I mean, it's, uh, it's difficult to control. And the gun, the cartridge, really, uh, the, the, uh, the long suit, the, the real value in that thing is the power of that cartridge. The accuracy of it, you know, the 308 is famous for being an accurate cartridge, 762 by 51. And so, as far as spraying, it's, you know, it's not quite. Now, there's situations where it might be handy, of course, but in a big battle rifle like this, you, you almost need, uh, you know, the BAR, the Browning, the BAR, if you're familiar with that, World War II uh, rifle, that thing is massive. 
if you've ever held one or seen one I've actually fired one at the Lucky Gunner machine gun shield I guess it was it's really heavy really big now it in in 30 out six which is essentially about the same cartridge uh, you can handle it you know full auto but most of these rifles they're, they're difficult to control it's gonna rise on you okay as I said this is the Israeli version and uh, it's a, it's the metric these things come in inch pattern or metric and there's so much information on them there, there's it's so complex the world of the FAL I recommend you go to FALfiles.com if you want to learn a lot about these because uh, you know those guys there on the forum they they study and talk about these you can learn anything you want about them how to how to acquire one uh, build one this is a kit uh, came as a parts kit. Uh, the owner, a local viewer, really nice guy, offered to, to lend us this, and uh, he he got it. Uh, it was well, it was bought as a parts kit. I'm not sure he did. It was back in the 90s at Knob Creek, actually, and uh, so he put it together. Originally, he said it had a uh, a barrel that was not lugged for a bayonet or threaded because it was during the assault weapons ban, you know, where we were all so safe right during that 10 year period. So in the 90s, but then recently he put a, a different barrel on it that has the lug. Now that it's legal, it's a much more dangerous rifle now because it has a bayonet lug and it has a, a threaded barrel. So, but, but it's a good looking gun. And he's been about trying to, you know, acquire like a paraphernalia or the accessory. Some of the, the web gear here is Israeli. The practice grenade, which you might see in a video, who knows? And uh, <laughs> and this attachment, this uh, the launcher uh, sight mechanism, uh, spigot it's called too. I think you uh, take the uh, flash uh, hider off and then put that on something. We may we may get in and do some of that, but uh, pretty neat, pretty neat gun. Metric. All right, 308, 762 by 51. Let's uh, see if it will shoot some more. I love this cartridge. You know the. You just, if you shoot this cartridge, you can't help but like it. And while it is a powerful round, uh, this gun is pretty heavy, so it, it really does uh, absorb the recoil pretty well. Let's take a couple more shots with it. All right. I expected it to kick more, but it really doesn't do too badly. And I think I've got the sights where they need to be. I'm going to try that little piece of uh, cinder block over there. Yeah, I've got it shooting right where I like it. Uh, I had to move the rear side a little bit. I'll have to apologize to the owner if he had it shooting where, where he liked it. I don't know, but it was shooting to the left for me. Yeah, it feels good to me. Got a nice trigger, I'll have to say. I'm going to shoot that uh, big old uh, tank over there, propane tank hanging. <laughs> you can hear the sound. That's, that's funny. Let's try this two liter here. That other one. Wow, he attacked. How about a 12 ouncer? How about let's miss a 12 ouncer? There we go. <laughs> oh, you have to use the sights. I see a 12 or a gallon jug. Wow, took that out, didn't it? Nice. You know what, that piece of uh, cinder block that fell off early, thought it was getting away, but it really did not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what'd I tell ya? Shot under it. Okay. Oh, man. Nice gun. This is a good looking gun, I have to say. You know, you have a uh, well, now that I've got it hot, let me show you how you field strip one of these things. You just uh, push up on Now, they're, they're different, I think. This one, the Israeli version, you push up on this, and you break it down like a shotgun. How's that for cool? Oh, yep, I, you know what I forgot? You got to cock it. There you go. And then, you do that. There we go. And you pull the bolt out, which might be warmish. There you go. There it is, and uh, that way it's, it's so simple to access from behind. You pull the cover off there. 
pretty simple in design, isn't it? It's cool, and there's your uh, gas piston that uh, bumps against the, the bolt, of course. You know, it's a, it's a short, short stroke uh, gas operated uh, rifle. I guess I won't take that out. You just turn, ouch, ooh, that is hot. I definitely won't take that out. You depress the button and you turn that and it comes out in the, the operating rod or the, uh, the, the gas rod, rather, gas piston that is in there. You know, this slides out, looks a little bit like a, maybe an AK piston and not quite the same. But it, it slides out and then you have access to clean, clean all of that. It's a, it's a pretty interesting and simple design, like most military uh, rifles need to be, right? It is a big rifle, it's a heavy rifle. These were, in fact, speaking of that, some of them came in heavy barrels, heavier barrel barrels. So you had the heavy barrel version, you have the light barrel version, as they call it. Most of the heavy barrel versions have a bipods, I understand. They're, they're really a battle rifle, you know, get down. You can shoot more, shoot longer before the barrel overheats, and that's the main reason for a, a bigger barrel, right? It absorbs a little more recoil, too, but uh, you can shoot it longer before it uh, heats up to the point where it, uh, you know, affects accuracy and and that kind of thing right so these are these are these are classics that that's uh, the attraction of course for me and for many of you is uh, a, a rifle like this a firearm that is used in so many countries and for a good while it just makes it interesting and close her up see? just like a shotgun how's that for cool I like that okay Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gun. As I say, this one was built from a kit, and uh, but you know the uh, IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, adopted it. Uh, it was after the Yom Kippur War when they realized. Uh, uh, some of my reading it was kind of interesting. They uh, they were discovered. Some of the soldiers were picking up AKs, you know, from from the dead enemy uh, during that, and uh, found they liked them. Then they would handle the sand, you know, better. Than, than these rifles and uh, we're smaller I guess I guess lighter you know somewhat lighter shorter and everything uh, so you know same old story you can't hate an AK right so that led to the the change there uh, where the, the Israel uh, adopted the M16 I, I guess I don't know all my history on that I think we probably gave them a lot of those M16s right so one reason they used those for a period of time and then also the Galil Where's the Galil? I had a Galil in 762 by 51 uh, back when they didn't cost a fortune. And they're heavy as well. Not quite as long, but, but they're heavy. But you've got that AK basic design in a Galil, that action, and uh, you know, where you can stuff them with mud or sand or anything and they still work. But these old things got the job done and uh, they are they're great shooters. They really are. You cannot hate that 308. Oh, I made a run. I might shoot a couple more shots keep it warm. I hate for it to cool off. I like this. Uh, and like I said, the owner has tried to uh, add you know, some original accessories uh, to it. You notice uh, you know, the, the writing on some of this. This was not made you know, for Walmart. You can tell if you can see that. Uh, these things, he's picking up original pieces and uh, you know, gradually, you know, the, you know, maybe you can read that. I, I, I'm still working on uh, my foreign languages but but anyways it, it's kind of neat uh, that's one of the interesting things about collecting this kind of thing firearms in general you, you tend to learn more about history you learn more about other countries and, uh, and uh, it's, 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 as well as shoot some interesting firearms right let's take a couple more shots with this thing oh yeah especially since 762 by 51 is so cheap right <laughs> If you can find it for under a dollar a round, uh, you're doing pretty well these days, aren't you? Oh man, I've shot so much. We got our uh, watermelon we'll pick off before we quit here. Oh, let's get this two liter. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Let me go back over there. I just really like this trigger too. Good. Feels really good. Who else we have here that I have missed out on here? I don't want to miss anybody. I don't want to neglect any targets. Yeah. I'm going to try that uh, piece of cinder block over there, another shot or two. I see those pieces are too large. Yeah. Oh, there we go. 
Oop, click. Oh, we had a little malfunction. Okay. <laughs> right where I wanted. I think I've got the gas system set where it needs to be. You know, you can adjust the gas system, put him on safe, and uh, we're firing uh, some ammo here. I've experienced, I've not had any trouble with it. It's uh, just to show you what we're shooting. You know, this is one of those you can find sometimes, right? I'm not even sure where that stuff is made, to tell you the truth. But uh, it, it tends to do okay. I've got some American Eagle here if we get to it, if we need it. But what's loaded in these magazines is the CBC stuff, okay? And uh, so we're, we're hot, so I'm going to, well, let's leave it hot uh, for a second and lying there. It's on safe. You know, it's your safety here, and you just push down for fire, okay? Your mag release right there, a little bit like a, an M14. You know, you get your clip. You can tell your metric magazine just says a little bit of lip on it there. The inch pattern uh, FALs have more of a more like a, a good quality M14 magazine, if you know what I'm talking about there. And uh, so I don't know if people who really study these guns and, and collect them, they'll probably tell you the inch pattern guns have some advantages over the metric uh, guns. I don't know. I don't know enough about them. Uh, they're they're just all I know made pretty well and they work and that's the main thing. So let me take out this uh, watermelon before we quit here. You think I should put the band out? No, nah, let's not do that. All right. The FN FAL Israeli version. Primarily, it was adopted for this purpose. Fruit killing. <laughs> oh, that's nice. It's hard, doesn't it? Let's take a couple of quick shots here in the dirt. Well, emptied it anyway. You notice it has a little jump. You can tell a little bit more about it in the in the video there than, than me, because I'm behind it. But think about cutting that thing loose full auto with you know 20 rounds just you know coming out of there fast. And you can see why it maybe wasn't the best idea uh, for every soldier to to shoot it that way a lot in, in most situations and you know a lot of militaries have gone through that and uh you know us in vietnam with the uh m16 and and going to a three round burst there eventually realizing just a lot of rounds were thrown out there maybe uh, unnecessarily uh and then at least with the m16 it wasn't a big recoil issue and uh, with this you know you're getting a lot of muzzle rise because of the power and so you, uh, in a lot of cases, would be wasting wasting the ammo. So, like I said, they uh, they uh, really quit training. A lot of uh, countries did uh, militaries uh, to shoot in full auto. And uh, and then and then again, these are you can find these in all sorts of variations. Uh, really, I recommend you study it if you're going to buy one of these and get into it, because there's the varying uh, quality. Uh, some of them, uh, of course, are all anything you're going to buy. Generally, it's going to be. Uh, fixed so that it can only be semi-automatic but uh, really study it because there's so much out there so much uh, I don't know that uh, if this would serve you better than an M1A you know or one of the, the modern you know 308s but the fact that it has so much history associated with it you can't hate it can you it's just uh, uh, like I say this was used in so many different countries the the NATO, most of the NATO countries I believe adopted this this was their rifle and except for the United States we were one of the countries that didn't we went with the M14 and I read that there was some kind of agreement you know, we were working on the uh, a light 30 caliber cartridge you know in the I guess it was in the uh, well the 50s uh, to replace the 30 out six and there are all kinds of cartridges that, that were come up with and variations of this in the late 40s and or the earliest part of the 50s and of course it evolved into this the FAL but I read that uh, Churchill there's some conjecture that Churchill and Truman reached some agreement that uh, 
that the other NATO countries could use our 762 by 51 cartridge we had come up with, you know, uh, for the FAL, you know, but we were not going to adopt the FAL and I don't know. But anyway, uh, FN doesn't really make any junk. They don't come up with any junk. Uh, if you've, uh, if you know much about FN uh, in Belgium and uh, they, they've always produced great weapons, great uh, firearms, and then even the variants uh, uh, of it are they're just good guns. And this is the Israeli version, as I said. Uh, it's a good looking gun. It, it looks, I think, uh, again, I don't know everything about these guns, but this one looks, uh, to me, uh, I don't know, it's more interesting than most of the other variants. Uh, you may know more about it. You may know that there's some limitations or, you know, to, the, to this particular version versus some others. But it's a good gun and it shoots that hard hitting 308, 762 by 51 round. And it has so much history, again, known as the, the right arm of the free world, you know, during, during the, uh, the Cold War era. And uh, that, that's what it was called, uh, all of these, these FALs. Great guns, great guns. We'll probably do some more with it. We're glad you come out today and uh, help us play with it a little bit. Life is good.